Minecraft 1.20 is adding a massive amount of different armor trims, though they are rare and can be incredibly difficult to find. But no worries, because in this video I'll show you the best ways of getting as many armor trims as you'd like. Now this video is all about the most efficient way to get every single type of armor trim in bulk amounts. I do have a video on armor trims already, and I'll make sure to have a link on the screen to that. But if you're wondering the very basics of how armor trim works, what you do is you take a smithing template armor trim, you put it in the smithing table's new UI, combine that with any piece of armor you want, and any colored or like material of a certain list. There's a 10 different materials like this, including things like diamonds or copper or emeralds. And you combine it there, you can get a pattern on your armor. And there are 11 different armor trims, each one with different patterns for different armor types, with 2,640 different combinations of armor, trim, and trim color. And as you can see, it decorates our armor very nicely. But the big question is, how do we get these in massive amounts? Now, once you have an armor trim, you can get more of it by combining it with a certain material in the crafting grid and using seven diamonds. That means that if you want to get tons of armor trims, we not only need a big source of diamonds, but you also need to know, is it easier to find these armor trims, or is it easier to use seven diamonds to get more of them? So let's first go over in depth how to find each armor trim and the best way of raiding those structures to effectively get those armor trims. The first armor trim is the sentry armor trim that is found in pillager outposts, but pillager Villager outposts are not very common, and also the chance of finding the sentry armor trim inside the pillager outpost is actually quite small. Only one in four of the chests inside of pillager outposts will have it, and because the pillager outpost only has one chest in it, that means you'd have to raid an average of four pillager outposts to find one of these sentry armor trims. And finally, after a ton more exploring, we have found inside of this snow biome a pillager outpost, and if we look in there, there is our sentry armor trim. And of course, now that we've found that, we have access to this item. But because pillager outposts are so rare and there is that low chance there, it's obvious to say that the best way of getting these is to copy them. How do you copy them? Well, for the particular armor trim of the sentry, you need a piece of cobblestone, as well as seven diamonds and the smithing template, and that'll give you more of them. And as you can see here, of course, if we're consuming seven diamonds for this, that does make it pretty expensive. Also, later on in the video, I'll discuss some really easy ways of getting diamonds to make these armor trims a bit easier to find. Now, once you have some of the sentry armor trim template, here's what it looks like on armor. We'll add, let's say, a netherite trim to our iron armor, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but it could still look good. And once we place it on here, you can, of course, get a good look. So to start off with, the amount of trim on the chest plate here is very small, just on the shoulder there. On the helmet also a rather standard band, and same on the boots, a higher up band that gets lower towards the back. And on the leggings as well, we have two bands, one higher up and one lower down. For this armor trim, we have to head into the desert and try and find ourselves a desert temple. Once you've found one of these to rate it effectively and get that armor trim, simply dig on the side here, but do not dig on that blue dot. And once you're at the bottom, break this pressure plate and place down torches so we can see. And let's look inside these chests. Now, unlike the pillager outposts, there's actually a fairly large chance of finding an armor trim inside of these. Although we didn't find one in this. If we head over to another one of these desert temples and we dig down to the bottom, just being careful not to hit that pressure plate or we will have a TNT explosion. And we look in these chests here, you can see that there are two armor trims here, and if we keep looking around in these chests, actually in another one over here, there is another two armor trims, so a total of four. There's no guarantee of finding armor trims in these chests, but the chance is fairly high, so the chance to find an armor trim in any chest in the desert temple is about 14%. But the thing is, you'll always find two armor trims if there's ones that generate in. That means that they're always like they were right there, where there's two armor trims at different slots inside that chest. What does it mean? Well, it means that because there's four chests and a 14% chance two armor trims that are found, all of the math together, combined with how common desert temples are, means that it's actually a fairly good idea to get more of your desert armor trims by just finding them. And although, of course, you can copy these, and I'll show you the way of doing that, it's just like the other recipes, unfortunately, consuming seven diamonds, but we use with that sandstone instead of something else, and that will give us more of this armor trim. And the actual appearance 
appearance of the desert armor trim is pretty good, as we can put it on some armor here if you want to take a look. The dune armor trim has this interesting sort of flower shape on it like that. Overall a pretty nice looking piece of armor, which is fairly easily found all around the desert. If you want to find the coast armor trim, that is located inside of shipwrecks. Now the chance of finding these in shipwrecks is actually kind of interesting, because they can be found in all three types of the shipwreck chests. That's right, you can find them in the map chests, in the treasure chests, as well as the supply chests. Now you can find them in an equal percentage chance in each chest, so it is a about 17% chance of finding two of these. Just like with the dune one, you'll always find two if there's any at all. And if we look inside this chest, you can see we actually have two right here, two of that coast armor trim. Now shipwrecks are incredibly common, and of course shipwrecks can have anywhere between one to three chests in them. As an example of how common shipwrecks are, we have a shipwreck that we're right at, and I can actually see from here there's a shipwreck over here, as well as a massive shipwreck in the water there, and so because of that, your best bet of getting more of these is very likely just to look around in shipwrecks, not necessarily having a need to actually craft more of these. But if a shipwreck has three chests in it, the combined chance is that over half of shipwrecks will have two of these smithing templates, where approximately every shipwreck you find will on average give you one. So the best thing is to drink a night vision potion, explore around the ocean going into shipwrecks, and to find a bunch of them. But if you'd rather not do that, then the way to craft them is to take your coast armor trim plus cobblestone and put in those seven diamonds. That will duplicate that, giving you more of the coast armor trim. In terms of what this armor trim actually looks like, if we put it on armor, we can take a look at that right here, and we have a very interesting pattern, sort of a straight line around the armor with one bump around the center. Next, we have the wild armor trim. This armor trim is only found inside of jungle temples, and to raid a jungle temple you want to have a pickaxe as well as some torches. Now obviously the jungle temple has these two traps, so simply walk to the side of the dispenser here and break the trip wires, and then you can go past this safely. And you can notice there's a trip wire on the ground right here as well, so again simply break that trip wire, not being directly in front of this dispenser here, and you'll notice we have right here there is a chest, and in there there is the two wild armor trims. There's a 33% chance for a chest that is inside of the jungle temple to have the wild armor trim, which is actually a very high chance. There's also the secondary secret chest inside of these. If you want to know how to do those, go over to the levers here, flick the one that is furthest away from the staircase, so flick that once, then flick this one that's closest to the staircase once, and then once again, and then flick this one that's furthest away one more time, and if we go up here, you'll notice what's happened is we have a little area that's opened up, and inside of here we have this chest, and this chest just so happens it also have the wild armor trims in it. It's actually very common to find a ton of the wild armor trims here. That means that for the average jungle temple, you're going to get more than one of these wild armor trims. If you do have a giant jungle near you, I actually would suggest the silver crafting more of them, but if you do want to copy these, what you'll need is a block that you can probably guess, that is mossy cobblestone. You also are going to want the actual wild armor trims and seven diamonds. That will copy into giving you more of the wild armor trims. If you want to know what the wild armor trims look like, they're pretty cool. Basically, if we put this pattern on our armor, it tends to be a rather low set and interesting pattern. And you can take a look at that right there, having some interesting details on it, especially on the helmet here, kind of almost forming like eyebrows or cutting off that bottom layer of pixels. This is probably the easiest armor trim to get in the game if you have a giant jungle that you're near. And of course, with every structure in the game, it's very easy to find them in bulk if you use the seed finder like, let's say, chunkbase.com. This next armor trim is the only one that is not found in a chest. In fact, it's actually dropped by a boss mob. There is a new unique drop for the Elder Guardian, that is the Tide armor trim. Now to actually get this without dying, what you want to do is drink a potion of invisibility, and also a potion of night vision, and also a potion of water breathing. Breathing. Then go down to a ocean monument that you've found, and with some dirt, also 3 TNT and 3 blocks of redstone, go to each part of this ocean monument that has a guardian in it, so that would be this one wing on the side here, there's also a wing over there that has one. We're going to blow 
blow that up to actually give us a way inside, and you'll notice we have the Elder Guardian here. Having a looting sword is not important in the slightest when trying to get this armor trim. However, one thing that is important is that you do have a really high quality sword. We're going to start hitting this Guardian. Again, be aware that you will take some damage from the Thorns effect. And the Elder Guardian upon death drops 0 to 1 armor trims, which means there is a 50% chance of getting one. Now, thankfully, there are three of the Elder Guardians in every single underwater temple and so because of this we have a fairly high chance of actually getting one you'll notice how incredibly safe the elder guardians are actually if you have the invisibility water breathing and night vision once we've got this one if we take a look at its drops you can see it also did not drop that but again 50 percent of them do which means that on average because there are three elder guardians in every single guardian temple we have 1.5 armor trims per guardian temple found and guardian temples are incredibly common so if you have some time to go maneuvering around around them. If you feel very adventurous, this could be a really easy armor trim to get if you combine it with sponge collecting. And in the drops of this Elder Guardian, if we take a look, we have that Tide Smithing Template armor trim. If you do want to know how to get more of this exact smithing template, you want to use the Prismarine that's in the Guardian Temple. And then of course surround the one Prismarine and the one Smithing Template to give yourself more of those, and we have those seven diamonds there. The actual appearance of this smithing template is probably one of the most unique of any, and that's because its pattern resembles really highly the look of not the prismarine itself, but the prismarine bricks. Here you can see what the prismarine bricks look like, and if we put all the armor on here, you can notice that the pattern on here looks like the prismarine brick sort of tri-brick texture with those three inverted patterns there. So I'd say if you like fighting guardians and exploring around going to different guardian temples, then it's definitely pretty easy to get more of these patterns by fighting the Elder Guardians, but in general your best bet is probably just to copy them. If you want to get the Ward Armor Trim, you have to go to where the Ward Inn is. That is, of course, the Deep Dark. And to actually raid the Deep Dark, I would suggest having with you Night Vision Potions as well as Wool, and then of course whatever other items you'd normally bring with you. So for example, let's say a sword and some armor. The actual chance of finding the Ward Armor Trim in the Ancient City is in incredibly low. In fact, it's even lower of a chance than finding an enchanted golden apple inside of the ancient city. And that's because only 5% of chests will have it in them, which means that you have to loot an average of 20 chests to find one of these armor trims. And of course, the safe way of going around the ancient city is to always be crouching, and when you do have to break a block to surround that chest in wool, and then once you've done that, making sure there's no shriekers nearby, you can break that or open that up whatever you want. If we take a look inside this chest, we can see this actually does have the ward armor trim in it. Once you've found this, definitely do not use it until you've copied it, as this is one armor trim that is 100% not able to be used long term unless you have a bunch of diamonds to copy it. This is something you 100% should copy and not just go around trying to loot things to find it. So to copy it, we of course need to craft it in the crafting table. The block that you copy this with is actually cobbled deep slate. So we're going to put cobbled deep slate in the crafting grid and also put into the crafting grid seven diamonds and the ward armor trim. This will of course duplicate the ward armor trim and give us the ability to use it without running out almost instantly. Now if we place down the smithing table, let's take a look at what the ward armor trim looks like by putting an amethyst shard trim on our armor. And if we take a look at that on the armor stand, this does not necessarily represent the warden, but it does have some similarity. So if we take a look at the chest plate here, that does have a warden type look to it, with there basically being that sort of open mouth and the two ears on the sides. I could see that trying to represent the warden, or maybe just Mickey Mouse, but either way, it is kind of an interesting armor trim. And 100% the best thing to do once you find one is to copy it. How do we get the Vex armor trim? Obviously the Vex armor trim is found inside of the Woodland Mansion. Now if we take a look at some of the secret loot chests that are found around the Woodland Mansion, you may not immediately find one of these Vex armor trims, but they are not dropped by a mob, they are found in the loot chests in this structure, and the chance of them being found in the loot chests here is thankfully fairly high. That's because there is a 1 in 50% chance, or basically half of the chests that have loot in them inside of the Woodland Mansion, to have the Vex armor trim. The materials you're going to want to bring with you to raid the Woodland Mansion are fairly basic. I would say bring some torches, some weapons, and as well as that to also have some boats to capture the Vindicators as well as the Illagers inside. As let's see if one of these mobs running towards you, you can
can simply place down a boat and they will get captured inside of it. And of course you can also use the torches to fully spawn proof the area, with potentially night vision being a good idea as well when raiding this. First of all, in terms of if it's a better idea to craft more of these or to go around looting to get them, I would say that although woodland mansions are a lot more common in Minecraft 1.18 and onwards, they are still fairly rare and so because of that the structure's loot is not super common. But because inside the actual structure, literally half of the chests in there will have the Vex armor trim, technically you're going to probably come out of every woodland mansion with enough armor trims to make yourself a full trimmed set of armor. So I would say ideally it depends, but generally it's better just to craft more of them. Now in terms of how to do that, you want to use cobblestone, and also surround that of course in the seven diamonds, that'll give us more of those Vex armor trims. What you'll notice almost immediately is the visual effect that's added by this Vex armor trim looks a lot like the Vexes and also the pillagers. So the helmet has these sort of angry eyebrows on it, and the boots as well as the tunic and the pants has on it this interesting pattern that in my opinion definitely resembles the clothes of the evoker, with sort of that robe-like center fold there. But anyway, that is how you get the Vex armor trim. For the next armor trims, we have to head into the nether dimension. Now in the nether itself, we have to go to the nether fortress, and to raid this in a safe way, I would suggest having very good armor, as well as a potion of fire resistance, a shield in your offhand, and a sword as well as some good food. We want to go to the interior section of the nether fortress, which you know you're in there because the interior and exterior sections are separated by this lava well room. Once we're inside of here, there are chests that appear throughout, and these actually are super common. Looking inside the chest, it's unlikely that you'll find the nether fortress trim, which is known as the rib armor trim. If you're wondering why that is, it's basically because there is only a 7% chance of finding it. Unlike the vex armor trim, where we have that very large percentage chance, with the rib armor trim, just a 7% chance means we'd have to find about 14 or 15 chests to get it. But thankfully, chests are very, very common inside of the interior section of the nether fortress, so this isn't too difficult to do. And if we look here, you can see inside this chest, we do have that rib armor trim. Now, if you want to know how to get more of these, I would definitely not suggest just raiding tons of nether fortresses to try and find more. It's very unlikely to actually get a good source of them that way, and so what you want to do is craft more of them. It'll just be plain and simple netherrack, plus the seven diamonds, and also the rib armor trim that'll give us more of those, and so we can copy them that way and get ourselves a very large supply. Of course, with the smithing table, we can then apply that to our armor, and we may as well apply it to the diamond armor we already have on us. So we're going to put a copper trim on every single piece of our diamond armor, and this is definitely a very cool armor trim because you can notice we have this ribbed effect. Or on the sides of the armor trim, there is these large sort of bars of the certain color, but on the front of it and on the back of it, we don't actually have that. They're just only on the sides. And is also a good way of subtly introducing to a piece of armor certain colors. And so that's how you get this interesting smithing template of the rib found in the nether fortress. But while we're in the nether here, let's take a look at the other armor trim that is located here, that is found in the other major nether structure, the Bastion Remnant. Now bastions tend to be fairly common across the Minecraft nether, although some people might think of them as rare, you can find them very frequently. For instance right here, you can see there's one here, and without moving at all, we can see one right next to it as well. However, the issue isn't really fine these, it's actually raiding them from the deadly piglin brutes. So if you want to raid the bastion remnant and get the treasure in it, you have two main options. The first one is to use boats to actually capture those piglin brutes. What we can do is we can get close to the piglin brutes, place down a boat for them to get captured in, but this can be incredibly dangerous to do and also very deadly if you're not careful. But you can see technically once those piglin brutes are in a boat, we can hit them a bunch of times with our sword and eventually after a ton of hits, they will die. And one thing we can do is if we drink a potion of invisibility and also take off all of our armor and don't have an item in our hand, then those piglins will eventually stop being mad at us as long as we don't touch them. But if we touch them or hit them, then they will be mad. And believe it or not, this even applies to looking in the chests. The snout armor trim found in the Bastion Remnant is an 8% chance of being in these chests. This chest, for instance, doesn't have it, but again, looking through all the different chests, you're bound to find a couple. But because loot chests are not insanely 
fairly common across the entire Bastion. You're definitely not guaranteed to find one of these in every Bastion, and so I would say that again with most of these armor trims, it is best just to craft more of them. Anyway, once you've escaped safely from the Bastion, if you want to get more of this smithing template, you want to use Blackstone, and with one of those, plus a snout armor trim and seven diamonds, we can duplicate this to get more. And of course, now that we have a bunch of them, we can see what that looks like on armor. So we're going to add an iron armor trim onto our netherite armor, because why not? And you can see if we take a look at the pattern here, it is sort of piglin related, especially on the leggings it is, because we have this big belt buckle, just like what the piglin brutes do, as you can see right there. They also have that giant gold belt buckle on them for whatever reason. If you want to find the obviously superior eye armor trim, what you need to do is throw some eyes of ender and find yourself a stronghold. Once you've done that, there are two types of chests in the stronghold that can contain this armor trim. There's actually three types of chests in the stronghold total, but the one of them, which is the storeroom chest, does not contain this trim. However, the altar chest, which looks like this, having a chest on this sort of structure along the hallways, this has a 10% chance of containing that armor trim. It looks like we got lucky in this chest, and we do have the armor trim in here, but again, only a 1 in 10 chance, not incredibly common. But by exploring around the stronghold some more, there's another type of chest we can run into, and that is the library chest. Now there's two chests in each one of these large libraries, or one chest in the small libraries. And if we take a look, you can see in this small chest, we have that eye armor trim, and also in the chest at the very bottom here of the library, at the base floor. Right here in the corner, there is also an eye armor trim. That's because the chance of finding the eye armor trim inside of these libraries is 100%. So every single chest inside of a stronghold library has a 100% chance for one eye armor trim. This is probably because strongholds are so rare, it actually gives a chance for people to find them. So of course, because of the rarity of stronghold, it's not really recommended to get all your eye armor trims by just raiding them. Your best bet that is just to find them once and then copy it from then on out. You do not have a source of a large number of these armor trims until you bend to the end dimension. That's because you need end stone. So one end stone plus the eye armor trim and seven diamonds, that will craft into giving you more of these eye armor trims. And this is legitimately one of my favorite armor trims, it definitely looks really awesome. We're going to put a red eye armor trim on some gold armor to take a look at what it looks like and we'll put that on every single piece. Now unfortunately the eye armor trim is not incredibly spectacular except for the chest plate, but the chest plate itself looks awesome, sort of having the visual of an eye on there, I think meaning to represent the eye of Ender, and also on the hat there we have what looks like sort of eyebrows, on my skin it kind of looks like I'm raising my eyes in a sarcastic way, which is kind of funny. But enough about that armor trim, let's go to the actual end dimension and find the last one. So to get this armor trim we need to go to the end city, and the chance of finding this in an end city chest is unfortunately incredibly small, with a chance only being 7% of end city chests, or basically you're going to have to go through like 15 end city chests to find one of these, meaning there won't even be one in every end city, in fact even in a very large end city you probably won't get one. That is of course the spire armor trim that is found in this structure. Now to raid the end city what you're going to need is some good armor as well as a shield, some food, a looting three sword, and a water bucket. The water bucket is good because it, because it lets you avoid the ability of the shulkers to hit you down, then of course you can defeat the shulkers here, so if we look inside these chests here you can see this one does not have the armor trim, and this one doesn't actually happen to have it either. Although one thing that is nice is the very large amount of diamonds that are found in the end city is a nice thing about this trim, because it means that you're not only getting the armor trim, but you're also getting yourself more diamonds. And of course be aware about falling from large drops just like this, as you can die pretty easily. Also every single chest inside of the end city has the same chance of giving you this armor trim. And in this chest we finally have found the spire armor trim. Now, if you want to get more of this armor trim we need to craft more, as like I said earlier they are incredibly rare. And to craft more you need to break into the end city a bit to get ourselves some purple blocks. So once we have those purple blocks and we've gotten rid of any nearby shulkers, we can actually get to crafting more of this trim. Place in the spire armor trim, purple blocks, and seven diamonds. Together that will give you more of this armor trim and you can craft a bunch of them. If you want to use this armor trim in a piece of armor, the actual appearance of the spire armor trim is pretty cool, and it more or less is a very zigzag texture as you can see here going back and forth all the way around. 
very interesting texture and a cool trim. Now obviously the massively important question is how do you get a ton of armor trims? As you can see with the vast majority of these armor trims, the trick is that you need a ton of diamonds to copy them. Not all of them, but with most. So how do we get that massive source of diamonds for our armor trims? Well, although I do discuss this in more detail in different video, here is a brief explanation of how to get ourselves a ton of diamonds. You want to go caving or strip mining as low down as possible. Let's say if you find a super deep cave, this is a lucky way of getting yourself a ton of diamonds quick. Technically anything at Y16 or below can give you diamonds, but most realistically you're going to find them if you are very very low down, like let's say at negative 50 or lower. Of course also a fortune pickaxe is really good. Up on the roof here we do have a diamond we found, and mining with fortune there we already got 3 out of it. But for a long term source of diamonds, get your pickaxe, and of course get your torches, and we want to start a strip mine. To strip mine ideally you want to go at negative 57 or negative 58 on the Y level. You can enable coordinates on bedrock to do this or in java to press f3 you can say this is negative 58 so it's a good level and you basically want to mine one direction and then every couple blocks mine side tunnels that go like this another thing you can do if you want to as well and you're a bit earlier game is place down a trap door if you're in java flip it up so you can crawl and then go forward like this mining through different blocks so you can by mining less blocks still expose a bunch and it technically is a bit more of an efficient way of getting yourself diamonds and of course the big thing about the armor trims in general is that they more or less give diamonds a use in minecraft again and this way you can get yourself an absolutely massive amount of all these smithing templates and because these are directly worth seven diamonds plus a little bit more because you have to find one of them to start off with and also of course whatever other items are there these are technically something that are worth a lot more than diamonds and almost in value of an entire diamond block and so that's how you get yourself an absolutely massive amount of armor trims in minecraft 1.20 I hope this video helped you, if you did make sure to press the like button, subscribe to see more content like this, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye and happy armor customizing.